So this, uh, this file that uh, we're working with here, it's just a little playground, a quick thing. We're not really going to use this. This is just kind of for your information, for your own notes. Uh, so Olivia and Cheryl, uh, could you do that a little bit later? So um, we're going to, uh, you can close this file. This was just kind of FYI. And uh, let's create a new file and save as. We'll save it into the folder of the of the JSON practice. All of these images, this is what I said earlier about we don't actually store the image data in the database. We store a reference to the image in the database. So we're going to save this file in this folder. Um, we'll call it social.json. And if you have the save as type of JSON, you can select it. social.json. So I'm going to save that in the folder, and in my case I have to set the language to JSON. And we're going to start the JSON data. This one will be for real. Um, we're going to store here information on these nine social networks. So we have the, the root level of, we can call this social networks. These names can be whatever we want, and whatever length, whatever uppercase, lowercase, and all of that. Whatever makes sense, whatever will, be, will work for typing and effort and all of that. Colon, square brackets. The same sort of idea that we had, well, if we have 70 users, it's an array of users, part of the users uh, table. Um, so this will break apart. And we're going to have one of the social networks, comma, another one, before we get too far off, two for the moment. So we're going to have two social networks in the social networks key, part of the whole uh, bundle of JSON data. And what's going to define our social networks are going to be the, the key and value pairs here. I'm going to break this apart. I'm going to have name, the name of the social network. So the first one we'll do is YouTube. We're going to have a description. Obviously, you can spell it out or keep it short. And say here, long form videos, comma. We'll say. IMG image, pick 01 PNG, comma, and then we'll have URL. As an example here, we'll list this address, any address, you can just say youtube.com. Here's an address to one of the uh, YouTube channels I'm involved in. So all of this represents one social network. In the social networks key, I have a value of an array. So this is the first item of the array, comma, another one. We'll do two or three to start off with. And then once we have that idea, we can do all nine or ten, whatever I have there. So this is the, the good and the bad, that this is very human readable, and then you can design this. Those are all the good parts. The bad part is that for the moment, we don't have, an, we don't have a way to do this very automatedly, very automatically, automatedly, I guess. 
at the moment we have to do it manually, meaning, okay, now I want to create a field or a record or an entry for the other social network. And the ones that I have here in the folder, I have YouTube, anyone know what this one is here? Vine, Vine which is actually now extinct. Uh, Twitter shut it down at the beginning of this year. And then the next one is Twitter, of course. What's this one over here? Google Plus. What about this one? This one? This one? Tumblr. Good. This one? And this one. SoundCloud. Okay. So we have, we'll do one or two more. We have, okay, YouTube. So I want to do Vine next. The reason I'm doing it in that order, it's simply because it's tied to also those graphics are named pick one, pick two, pick three. Um, the graphic, of course, could have been named YouTube.ping or Vine.ping or whatever, um, but because we're also going to create a, eventually a for loop to do something automatically, uh, the images have this easy sequence of 0, 1, 2, 3. So the images could have had any sort of name, but because I'm already kind of thinking ahead of how I want this, I've kind of set it up. So my point is, I also need a name, description, image, and URL for Vine. And I also need a name, description, image, URL for Twitter. So easy thing to do here, of course, is to copy and paste. But the problem with copy and paste is you have to make sure that your code is correct before you copy and paste it nine times long. So to confirm, we have a comma at the end of each of these pairs until the last one. So you're going to need the, well, I guess just this chunk, because then I'll put it between the curly braces, or copy the curly brace and then replace that curly brace. So I hope you know how to copy and paste, so go ahead and do that. And now I've got a copy of that, which I need to change. Okay, now the name is Vine. A description for that. The reason I had that one also was to say short form videos. The big cool thing about Vine was that it was videos that were six seconds long. And I had a Vine account and I liked it and it was fun and then they shut it down. YouTube's still around. Image, pick two. And address, uh, you can just go to vine.co. I, I don't think it really works anymore really, but just an address. Here's a super pro user's tip that I'm surprised people don't know this. When you copy something, it stays in the memory until you replace it with something else. So I see a lot of people that then they come back and copy that again. It's already in the memory from the last time that you copied it. So what you need is a comma and then a paste. Don't go back and copy it again because things stay in the memory as long as you copy some until you copy something else. If for some reason I accidentally copied a comma, then yes, what I will paste will be a comma. And then I have to select again all of that info. But if you don't know that pro tip, what you've copied in memory stays there until it's replaced by something else. So because it's a third network, comma, after that group of data. We'll only do three, we're going to have to do all nine. I want to get to the JavaScript and the HTML. Third one is Twitter. Uh, this one is, okay, now I have to change this one also, but I would say 140 characters, but they just announced they're going double, 280 characters. It's too long, I know, I, I don't like that. I don't like how they're changing the quality of Twitter. Like All these networks, they're all homogenizing, so that's boring. 140 characters, missives. So in addition to teaching these programming classes, I also do a lot of uh, s social media and marketing classes, digital marketing. Uh, so on Fridays, I do the social media class. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about Twitter. Uh, and then now, tomorrow, when we start the day, I have to tell people, and now we're going to get 280 characters um, for Twitter. So just three networks is fine. You don't have to do all nine. 
you can't write the comments over here to give yourself notes. But that curly brace is the last social network in this array, all inside of the JSON data bundle. So this is like what Marvel would give back to you, or Twitter, or Facebook, or Flickr. You, you write the right code to connect to their database, and it would give you back a, string, a stream of data, something like that. So what we're then going to see with JavaScript, we're going to process that. We're going to then process what has come to us, and then write it as something meaningful on screen. We have all of this data saved into this file, this JSON file, and the only thing in this JSON file is the data. Imagine that this is the database. This JSON file includes all of our database data. So we're going to create an HTML file uh, to then connect to this file. I've got about 22 lines of code here. Notice how orderly it is and all of that. That's one of the reasons why this is also popular, because it's very human readable. So confirm you don't have any final commas at the end of each network or at the end of the, of the uh, array. That's our data there. Let's create a new file, and this will be uh, index.html. So create a new file and save as into this JSON practice folder, index.html. So we have a brand new file, index.html, and here we'll just create a very quick 10 lines of HTML. Maybe that autocomplete will be nice. Title we can say uh, social networks. In the body we can write uh, random social networks. So ten lines. Go ahead and write that. So from this HTML file, I want to connect to the JSON file so that I can pull the data from there and use it as I wish. That's basically what happens in any app. Instagram, let's say. I log into Instagram. My username and password is sent to the Instagram server. It establishes a connection. Then various stuff happens behind the scenes that I say you know, when I click on the button that, that says, show me popular photos, well, it goes, a command is sent back to the server, and the server responds with a bunch of data that then the Instagram app renders on screen as photos with a person's name and uh, the picture and the number of likes and all of that stuff that is saved in the database. All of that information that you see in any app or social network and such, it's data in a database. You can even think about it in the real world. This is, a, this is a kind of a database right here. It's rows and columns. There's a column of your name, a column of the time. There's the row of a particular person. So this person's name and signature, time in, time out, and hours, that's one row of information. This can be represented as JSON data. Right? You've got uh, students, field, or name. You've got time in, time out, total hours, and then the information. Well, we're going to use JavaScript to connect to the, to the file. But I want to press a button 
every time I press the button, it's going to randomly pick one of the social networks and then display it on screen. So in addition to having that H1, we're going to create a button with the button tag. Uh, let's say get network. This needs an ID. Let's say btn get network. And then to display it on screen, we'll create a div, which will be empty, but it'll have an ID. Div show network. So a button that we will press to get the network, and a div that will show the network. Once we connect to the data, pick a random one and show it on screen. Alright, so after that we will need our script. We're going to keep it simple in one file. And as usual, we'll use the syntax of the immediately invoked function expression. You've got your opening and closing um, parentheses, function, open and close, turn and brace. So at the beginning of the class, I recommended a couple of books. And I know we don't really use the books in class, but hopefully you are looking through them and if you decided to get them, because they're optional. This that we're doing here actually is a, is a variation of the chapter in our book. So if you want another perspective on it, I don't remember the chapter number, but this that we're going to do here is in the JavaScript book, one of the chapters in there. So once we've got that, we're going to separate these curly braces into multiple lines. I'm going to use strict mode. So if there are errors, hopefully we'll catch them easier. I'm going to create objects uh, that represent the button, the div, and that JSON file. So var to start creating variables here. <coughs> L btn get network. Now we don't have jQuery, we don't have jQuery library, the jQuery library here. So we have to use the, sh the long hand. The short hand, of course, is the dollar symbol selector, but we don't have jQuery, so we have to use the long way. Document.get element by ID. in quotes without the preceding hash mark btn uh, get B, uh, bt btn get network no no pound sign in front of that right because the pound sign there would be necessary if we were using jquery but since we're using plain old javascript a long form it says there get element by ID, so we don't write the extra pound sign. I also then comma need the L div show network exactly the same way. Document get element by ID quotes div show network. <coughs> Comma one more. Whoops, I forgot a quote right there. Let 
to connect to another file. On a technical level, it's not that easy. Um, we have to do a lot of setup. We have to create a special object which will allow us to connect to another network. I mean another file. We have to then specify what's the file. Then we need to open, we need to initialize the connection, we need to open the connection, then we get the data, then we process it. It's a lot of back and forth, this like handshake about what do we need to do to step out of this file to connect to another file. So we often have we often have a, an object called XHR, and I forget at the moment what it stands for. X is like cross or something, cross, cross header or something like that. I'll look it up later, but this object represents a connection, an object to be able to connect to another file. So then we have the object of new XML capital XML, capital H, TTP, but not the rest of the TTP capitalized, dot request, open, close, parenthesis, semicolon. So these two right here are things we've done before, creating a JavaScript object representation of an element in HTML. We've done those before, no problem. This one is brand new. So, this is creating an object to open HTTP requests between files. There is a, there is a, there is that object that we worked with before, remember, uh, we, we did do in here random numbers, right? We did create things with random numbers. Uh, we had the object of math, the math object that has built-in methods and properties to create a random number. Well, there's an object built into JavaScript for us to be able to attempt to connect to another file, XML HTTP request. So we're creating a new instance of that object. We're storing it as the shorthand XHR. So using that, we have these various abilities to connect to other files and then process the data that comes back to us. I want that when we press the button, we want to connect to the JSON file to start to retrieve the data to work with it. So we'll set ourselves up with an event listener to wait for the click of the button to, to get that social network info. So we have the lbtn get network dot add event listener. We're using plain old JavaScript, so it's add event listener. When we were using jQuery, we had, remember, on submit or on click. That was the jQuery way. But here, because we've got, we don't have jQuery, we have to use the long form. And the capitalization here, of course, matters. Capital E, capital L. Well, the event that we're waiting for is a click. And that button gets clicked on. Comma. We'll run a function. Fn. social network. as we've done before, we create the object, we create it to that listener, and then in between we create the definition of that function. So backing up, function, fn get social network, parentheses curly braces,
this is and function get social network. inside of this function xhr dot. So we've got the xhr, the, the, the object that allows, allows us to connect to another file, and it has a method. Open. So we can go look up and get the official documentation, and I would recommend it if you want to do something fun over the weekend. Go look up the definition of what XML HTTP request can do. And you'll see that uh, it can open a connection to another file. Well, here we need various arguments to pass into it. Well, uh, what are we opening, how are we opening, and, and so forth. So inside of open, we have get in capital letters. Behind the scenes of websites and servers, there are these basic commands that are happening when we try to connect to a website. We're going to get a connection. We're going to go to a website. So here we're going to get, comma, the name of the file we're trying to connect to, which we called social.json. If you called it something else, of course, you write what you call it. But that JSON file with three networks so far, YouTube, Vine, and Twitter, we're going to get the data in this file using the open method of the XML HTTP request object. And lastly, comma, let's say true. notes here, use the open method to get the data from a file and do it asynchronously. <coughs> Asyns asynchron asynchronously. I think that's how it is. Asynchronously. Asyn Honestly, yeah, asynchronously true. That's the third uh, item here. Uh, short answer is this is the syntax. This is how you write it. This is what you have to do to try to connect to another file. Yeah, there are a couple of possible things here besides get. Uh, short answer, that's what we want. If we're connected to some other file, obviously we change that. Asynchronous set to true. The default is false. We set it to true saying as we attempt to connect, also let other things happen. If it's left on false, it will wait until the connection and nothing else of the code might process. So asynchronously means you know, it happens uh, separately from other things. So let's try to connect, but also keep processing the code, basically. And that's what a lot of the modern web, a lot of modern apps and such do, that stuff is happening behind the scenes asynchronously while something else is also happening. Uh, older websites, everything was processed line by line, and we had to wait for it, and the JavaScript uh, was processed line by line, but more efficiently, we now have, we have the ability to be asynchronous to do multiple things at once. Next line. This sort of sets up the ability, the ability to open that connection, to actually initiate the connection. Let's say xhr.send. Prepare to connect to the file, basically. Connect to the file. And here we're inside of that, we're saying null. Because we could, in addition to connecting to that file, also send data to it, to that other file, to that other connection. So we're saying, no, don't send any extra data. Let's just connect to that file 
let's um, not send extra data. So we can say notes above, set up the connection to the file, below, connect to the file. So again, like I was saying, that it's this complication of connecting from one file to another. And here's our setup. Things could go wrong. I could have mistyped the name of the file. The file could have moved between trying to connect it and connecting. The server could have crashed. There could have been a lot of things that could have happened. So we have to sort of listen. Well, what what did we get back? Did we actually connect? You know, what, what was the result? So next line xhr dot on load equal to function curly braces. When the data has loaded, do something. So I'm here, set up the connection, start the connection. When the data loads, do something with that. We would have a, a other items here like on fail that sort of thing. If, if the server was unavailable, then we would process well, what would happen if we don't have a server connection. We pop up a message to the user, sorry, server's down. You know, all of the stuff that, that we have to deal with. When we use someone else's app, it's all, it all works. But when we make our own app, we have to cover all of these possibilities. Typo. Uh, fun, fun Siten. Yes. It's the alternate spelling. Function. So let's break apart those curly braces there. And I'm going to note and unload event. Because that curly brace is easy to lose track of. console log xhr dot response text capital T at this point we can run it and, and, and try to see if it if it's working when you check your developers console if you see an error we need to deal with that one if you don't see an error click the button, and then there might be an error, because this stuff doesn't happen until you press, some of this stuff doesn't happen until you press the button, right? And other stuff sets up before you press the button. But here, I'll explain what this does in a moment, but if we did manage to load the data, in short here we're going we're gonna to see what that response is, the text, the data that was responded back to us. check if mine works. Now, here's one bug that I noticed uh, while we're testing this. If you test this in Chrome, I think it uh, it's going to really complain when you click it. Yeah, so let's test this in, in Firefox. Chrome has a very high security bar at this point because it's complaining about cross-origin requests. I'll explain that in a moment. For the moment, save this and run it in, in Firefox. Firefox is a little bit more lenient of what we're trying to do at this point. And I'll explain what we're trying to do in a moment. But run this in, in, uh, in Firefox, press the button, and we'll get a couple of things, the raw data coming from our file, hopefully. Probably this parsing error, which is fine, we can ignore that for the moment. 
but if the uh, this is normal for the moment, but if this is bothering you, what you can do is you can turn on and off these filters in Firefox. You know, show me net uh, output, CSS output, JavaScript security logging. If you turn that one off, it hides it. It doesn't actually clear it or anything, but you know, if you don't want to see it, you can turn it off. I'm going to leave it on. So that, that error is normal, but I'm seeing the data from my JSON file, hopefully. Let's pause there. This is the code so far. It is a lot to set up simply to start to see the data. That's what it is there. Anyone have a little trouble getting that data to show up when you press the button? The big idea again is we've got this data. It's it's plain old text data in the JSON file. But behind the scenes of many databases, that's what that is, just, just text. So we have to set up JavaScript with this brand new object that we haven't seen before, XML HTTP request, which creates a request from you know file to file on a server. And it's got dot .open, dot .send, dot .onload, that response text. We have these built-in methods and properties to deal with trying to connect with errors, with it working, with it not working and such. And what I get out of this is the raw data from that file. Well, that's coming back to me as raw data. Data output. We can process this data so that we can use it as JSON objects. Right now, JavaScript doesn't understand that this data is bundled together as meaningful information. It only sees it as a long string of letters and numbers and symbols we want to process it as a real object that JavaScript can handle. So if we do a console.log then we write JSON capital J-S-O-N dot parse Similar to how we had math.random, JavaScript has a JSON object with a parse method, parse to process the raw data. The raw data is currently represented by xhr.responseText. So if you copy that and paste it inside of the parentheses of the parse method, This raw data, this command, will parse it, will process it, so that we can work with it in a slightly different way. Remember when we were over in our very first little bit of practice of JSON, we had db.lastname, console.console.log, db.lastname. Give me the last name from the database. Well, that was assumed it had already been processed as JSON data. Uh, at the moment, we can't, we can't quite do, you know, xhr dot uh, response text dot uh, social network. You have to process it first so that it understands that it's an object. If you contrast this, save it and run it, you'll get a bunch of code that looks the same as before, raw data, and then you'll get it, hopefully, slightly differently, so that it understands that it's a JavaScript object. So I'm going to refresh it. Click Get Network. Now what came back is an object that has three items in the array. It understands that instead of this just being raw data, it's one object, comma, another one, and another one. And inside of that, if you click on Object, 
it'll say, okay, we've got three items. First object, second and third object. And each one of those is made out of description, image, name, URL. Data converted to JavaScript object. So since this console output uh, process didn't just spat it out to the console, it's done. I want to do what I was then alluding to at the very beginning of the day, var db equal to, when we had the example at the very beginning, I had var db equals and then all of our data. All of our data is this, which should be processed. So var db equals, database equals, this, json parse, the data, the response data, the raw data. Convert raw data to JavaScript object. Store it. As a variable. Console log db would should give you the exact result as this one here. So I, I won't do it, but logically that should make sense. Log the db of the database which it, what's in the database is exactly what we get up here. So that would give you the same thing. But instead, here's where we're dealing with, now we can actually deal with the data inside of the dot social, the zero width object, the first object, dot um, <coughs> name. That's one of the fields we have, right? Name. Name. Now when you run that, you click the button, and I should show you the name of the first social network. Yes. We get that back from the JSON file. Oh, social networks. Yes, sorry about that. That's the name of our main field, social networks. In the file, social networks uh, key, the zero width item of the array, give me the name. So press the button. YouTube. could say um, image <clears throat> and that would display you know, pick well, I could do a zero uh, I could do two so it'll be the third one it'll it'll say pick uh, three the the image the name of the file in that field, So that's loading up that. I could say for the second network, because we start with zero, so zero, one, the second network, 
give me its URL. Okay, we call it URL. So now DB represents the data from the database. It's all the data in the database. Obviously, later we'll talk about how to much smartly, much more, much smarter, uh, load up certain ranges of data and alphabetize it and all that good stuff. But the idea is here we're connecting to a simple kind of database, which is in a separate location, uh, loading it into our HTML file, displaying it in the console, and then we'll make it display on screen in that div in a moment. And we will see about each one of those three uh, items, or each one of those four fields, name, description, image, and URL and picture, we'll do something with all of them. Let's see here. I get the network, I get the raw data at the top, I get the representation as an object, and then I get that one field, the dot URL. All of that is happening once the data loads. After we've clicked the button to run get social network function. the URL of the second social network from the database. To uh, display this on screen, uh, we could simply do uh, the name of that object and then change its property to one of these properties. So we have l div show network dot inner HTML equals to db dot social networks the zero with one dot description so if we want to see this on screen we have a placeholder on screen we can change its HTML property and display the description of the first social network from the database now when you click the button you should see the description of YouTube that of course, if it works, will only display the social the description of one social network. I want to be able to click on the button and give me the description of a different social network every time I click it. Not only the, not only the description, but the image and the text and the link, all of that data that makes up a social network. Because I've got that desk dot image dot name and dot pick and dot URL. So I get that. I can comment that out because that was just to show that's what would happen if you do that. Uh, to make this be more meaningful uh, randomly and such, here we have to deal with random numbers. We have three possibilities, 
So it's either going to be 0, 1, or 2. Either the 0 width network, the first or the second. So we have to randomly choose 1, 2, or 3. So we'll create some variables here. Some more variables. Um, first, str. This is uh, to represent a string because uh, I want it to have a bunch of things to display at once. So this is a, a common uh, tactic right here. We create a string, which then we're going to fill with all of the pieces of what this network is. Uh, it's going to be empty at the moment, but as we start to build the name plus the image plus the description, all of that will be joined together in this one string. So instead of us having to say over here, inner HTML equals description plus whatever plus whatever, all of that will be put into a string, which then we can easily use. So comma, we'll create another variable here. We'll call this uh, random social network. This is equal to math.random. So there's the built-in JavaScript object of man, create a random number. Random numbers in most languages, especially JavaScript, gives you a number between 0 and 1. We need whole numbers. We also need the range, either 1, 2, or 3. So if we multiply by 3, it would give us between 1 and 3. But when we add a fourth network, fifth network, twelfth network, four hundredth network, I don't want to go back in and keep changing that. We have the ability <coughs> to check how many networks are in the database via db dot social dot length. No square brackets. So at the moment, this length is, a, is three. There are three networks in the social, social networks, sorry, I'm using the shorthand, social networks. Check the length of the social networks array in the database. Okay, so now it's giving me a random number up to three. And when I add the fourth and fifth networks, it will be up to four or five. That'll still give a fraction, and it may actually choose, if I've got three items, we've got 0, 1, and 2. It may, when we round this, it may also choose a 4, uh, a 5. It may go out of the range. So we want to uh, constrain it by wrapping the parentheses around all of that. because we're using math.floor. We have math.round, which will round up, round the number up or down, that I've said before, and we've used floor because we want to also cover zero, the possibility of zero. Zero is the first item of the array. So if it's a one, Point 0.1, it rounds down to 1. If it's a 1.9, it rounds down to 1. If it's a 0 0.9, it rounds down to 0. If it's a 0 0.001, it rounds down to 0. So there's the possibility to select the 0th item of the array, the YouTube network. All of that stores a random social network number. Based on the length of the array, Create a random number, round it down, whole numbers. Next line. console log
db.socialnetworks, square brackets, random social network. Uh, name. Save it and run it. Then, if it works, we'll take a break. If not, we'll check it. But what should happen here? Every time you press the button. It should create a new random number between 0 and, and 2, so 1, 2, 3, not too many to choose from. It should, create a, it should pick a random number, and then in the console it should display the name of that particular random number. Up here where we had 0, it obviously displayed the description of YouTube, but here it could be between 0, 1, and 2 every time you click. see here. Get network. I see Twitter. Click that again. I see YouTube. This is getting very messy. So I'm going to uh, comment out this one and this one. I don't need the whole raw data anymore. I confirm that I'm seeing the data. So that's way too much to see in my console. I don't need to output the, the object version of it. I confirmed that already. So comment that out. Um, I guess I don't need this other one over here. That one was simply showing the the second URL. I need that. Now we should get some cleaner output. YouTube, Twitter, YouTube, YouTube, Twitter, 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 Vine. So it's random, but obviously with only three items, it's uh, not that random. Once we have more networks, it'll be more random. And again, if those parsing errors get in your way, you can hide them by turning off that JS exceptions log. So if that's working, you're getting these different networks, good. If not, let's take a break. Uh, it's 8.11, we'll be back at 8.21, so then we can start to display this on screen in a cohesive way.